Hi, and welcome to Joanne's. How may I help you? Today, if you're looking for a good craft to do, crocheting is just the thing for you. It's a series of stitches and loops and knots that can create hats, blankets, pot holders, basically anything. And today we are gonna learn the history of it, what materials you need, and basic stitches and how to do the single stitch. First off, where did the word crochet come from? It is believed that it derived from the French word croc and the Norse word croaker, which directly translates to the word hook. And according to Darn Good Yarns, it is believed it traveled through um, the trading routes of Arab merchants, or it came from South Native Americans, or even Chinese needlepoint in countries like Turkey, India, and Persia. Even though the actual origin is unknown, there's a lot of speculation as to where it came from. And it was originally used for commerce, creating things like fishing nets, clothing, and just items for trade. Overall, it wasn't much for expression, it was more functionality. Until the 50s, then it became more of a hobby and an expressive art form. And it was originally passed down orally, and then it became translated into written patterns, so then almost anyone could do it. It was the first written pattern known was in the 1830s by Rigo de la Brinchardier, and she wrote a pattern regarding Irish crochet, which is a technique she learned from her Irish mother and British father. And yeah, that's how written patterns began to be developed. And now you can get a written pattern for almost any kind of crochet project. Now, what do you need to start crocheting? Some of the most basic materials are the crochet hook, something to cut your yarn, and of course, your actual yarn. These are just basic materials, but you could also use stitch markers and different size needles in case you want to sew together two parts of a project. And the stitch markers help count where you are in your project so you don't get lost or mess up. Killer Crochet um, recommends that you begin with a bright colored worsted weight yarn. So it's easy to see where your stitches are and it's easier to learn how to hold it. And all of this can be shown on the yarn label. It can show the weight, which is usually in numbers and worsted weight, I believe is about four. And then it also shows the recommended hook size and washing instructions, the lot number and the color of the yarn. The lot number shows, helps you identify which balls of yarn are dyed the same. So then your project all looks uniform and the color doesn't change halfway through the project. I did this before and in my blanket, you can see halfway a darker gray and a lighter gray, even though they're the same color name. It's just because they were dyed differently. And the hook size and the yarn texture and weight usually depends on what kind of outcome you're looking for. Like if you're looking for a big cozy blanket, you might pick a big thicker yarn, but if you're trying to make a sweater, you may pick a thinner yarn like this. It usually depends on what you're comfortable with and the outcome you're trying to achieve. Now I'm gonna go over basic, the most basic stitch, which is a single crochet. And this will help you start a project that can lead to just a simple square and you could either use this as a pot holder or you could sew them all together to make a blanket. 
you could make almost anything with just the basic square. And I'm going to be using a bigger hook just so then it's easier to see. But generally for this yarn, you would use a hook about this size. So it's a lot different. And on the hook, you can see a label that says the size number. This one is a seven millimeter. And it's usually there's also a letter that's associated with it, but not all hooks have that on it. First, you're gonna make a slip knot and you kind of cross it over and pull it through. And the way you know you did it correctly is if you can pull it and it tightens on your hook. Then you're going to hold your yarn kind of like I like to take my middle finger and my thumb to pinch whatever part of the project I'm holding. And then the rest of the yarn goes around your pointer finger. And then you, I'm right handed. So I crochet with holding the hook with my right hand and you wrap the yarn and then pull it through that slip knot. And then you continue this until however big you want the project to be. This is called chain. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six chains, and I'm gonna go up to 10. So seven, eight, nine, 10. And then I did an extra one because that will just go up the side and won't be considered an actual stitch. And then you insert your hook in one of those chains you wrap the yarn around the hook, you pull it through the first loop, then you wrap the yarn again and pull it through both loops. And generally you'll know if you did it correctly, if you can see a little V within the stitch, and then you will just continue it all the way down. So through, wrap, and then pull through both. And then through, wrap, pull through both and you continue it all the way down your row. And then once you reach the end of the row, you'll chain one because it will be up on the side and won't be considered an actual stitch. And then you flip your project. So then you're continuing to work with your right hand. And that's the process of making the square. And then you tie it off and you can either sew it together or leave it as it is. It really depends on what project you want to me. And now we are going to go over all that we've learned today. We learned the history, the materials, and the basic stitch single crochet. Crochet is a relatively cheap hobby that helps relieve stress. You can take it almost anywhere and you can make almost anything. Overall, it's very beneficial to someone's mental health. And now I hope you're hooked and thank you. Thank you.